We're back with another how transmitter video. Who would have thought this quick? One thing you'll notice, it's silent. There's no clickiness right now. And um, if you saw my recent short, you'll know that something new has happened. That's right. The oscillator now starts and stops automatically. I say oscillator, but in this case, it's actually the fire sequencer. Um, but what I did learn is that on the original panel, um, you know, the way you powered this thing is it's basically like a class A loop. You had in and out going to every station and both sides went back to the panel. Um, now, where the power was actually applied was the in from one side and the out from the other side of the loop. Um, not entirely the most intuitive, but that's how it worked. Uh, the way it actually cuts power between stations is like whether the power is going back the other direction. And the way the panel knows that it's in alarm is that the power does not return to it. So let me explain. Right now, this relay here is being closed through supervisory power. If I unplug the circuit, I get supervisory alarm. And the oscillator is running, which is what it would have done on the real panel. If you had a supervisory, it was supposed to run the oscillator because that meant codes were supposed to be sent generally. However, if you had trouble condition, so in this case, I just disconnected the power supply, but another trouble condition might be you had someone cut the wire between the two stations. Guess what? Trouble for that as well. And yes, I have now officially uh, five pin XLR'd the HAL transmitters. Go figure. Um, that has also worked for this, just like it did for the Honeywells. Uh, I use four pins, although technically you only need three. Uh, I use four pins just because I don't want to accidentally plug a microphone into it or something silly. So, um, real quick, let's just run both fire and uh, the other one at the same time. Both fires, I guess, is what I should say. So there you go, that's the supervisory kind of turning off at the end of a code run. Now, what I've learned since my last video is that these things actually had a printout. Even going back to the 30s, 1931 the patent was applied for, it was uh, approved in 39 I think, for literally a thing that would print out not just a tape strip, but almost a full receipt that said like fire alarm or guard or watchman, and then it would say the number, and uh, the later ones you could actually program in the numbers to match a specific location, so it could actually give like a room or something. Um, that was the ones that came out later in like the 60s. But what I'm realizing is this system literally told you what it was doing on a printout in the 30s. That's crazy. That also explains why I'm not just finding the panels for this as like a casual thing. They were like huge desk systems or like uh, racks and they were like floor to ceiling or literally an entire desk. Um, so needless to say, there's a reason I'm not just easily finding a lot of the information or the panels or anything about this is they were extremely high end. And I think what ends up happening is the systems get decommissioned and all that stuff is lost and you end up with these things getting you know, collected. but. Uh, just because they're cool looking, but not because anyone had any idea how to use them. Um, but <laughs> that's changed. Um, so, yeah, the, you've, 
this relay is powered off the basically the opposite ends of the loop where you apply power. So you apply power to the input of the positive and the negative of the return, or so, yeah, the in, the positive of the input and the output and the negative of the output, something like that. Yes, um, and then this relay is on the opposite of that, so it's on the positive of the output and the negative of the input. So if you look here, this is the negative of the input. That wire under there is actually the one relay. Um, I think this is the other relay, but anyway, it <laughs> does not matter. Uh, point being is, is that's how the supervisory relay would have worked. Now in the original circuit, uh, that would have shunted across the, uh, a light bulb to uh, activate the oscillator in so the light bulb would have normally been uh just lit up across the resistance of the uh motor basically and so to actually when this thing then closed that would then turn off the light bulb and turn on the motor and then these things were supposed to run but anytime that happened you were also supposed to get the supervisory so i mean it's a pretty simple but also very ingenious system and um the whole thing, oops, resetting it, but it's, uh, I didn't reset the fire yet. Um, doesn't like when you do that. But um, for this whole thing to have come out when it did, is pretty ahead of its time. And um, needless to say that there's more and more information I keep finding out about it. Um, they did have ones that could run continuously, so you could be getting kind of alarms until it you know, res resolved otherwise. Um, I found versions with telephones in them, so I'm wondering if they even sent a third code for the telephone. I have no idea. Um, I, there's just more and more I keep finding, but then there's also so little that I can find. Uh, it, it's a very interesting um, system and problem to have. Uh, I did definitely find some examples of, like, Autocall putting these in some pretty you know, high-end buildings, maybe even like skyscrapers and things like that. Obviously airports and municipal stuff was already sort of suspected, but, um, you know, given the use case of these, um, yeah, what can you say? Um, I'm trying to think of what else, um, uh, the relay on the actual one also would have, uh, cut another relay over for the bell circuit. They kind of used the signal line on this um, that goes through all the code wheels to drive the bells directly. Um, I'm not doing that. If I just basically connect the signal line and then to, to negative, it kind of just puts out voltage and works on this. Now, supposedly you can feed voltage into the signal line. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a different reference or, you know, how exactly you're supposed to do that. So it doesn't short everything out, but, um, yeah, I have no idea. I not haven't figured all that out entirely, but from what I gather, um, you know, this is kind of enough because it's driving this relay, which then I can use to do low voltage stuff. Um, the only other thing to mention is I did separate high and low voltage in here. Um, I put those balance on it as well, but I'm not sure if it's even needed anymore. Uh, but separating that out seemed to solve a lot of problems I was having with like weird, like resetting and all kinds of like missed triggers, like that little bouncing that this relay does at the very end. It's not a big deal, but it was way, way worse before I separated all this. I think it was causing this thing to then bounce and causing all sorts of havoc. So, um, needless to say, separate your high and low voltage common sense, I guess. Um, what else? Yeah, both these relays in here sort of mounted with some makeshiftness. <laughs> That's just an old Altronics relay. Um, and what else? Yeah, I think I mentioned five pin between them now, just like the Honeywell system. So that makes it nice and easy. Um, or sorry, not five pin, four pin. Um, I use four pin instead of three pin. Just anything but three pins. So I don't do microphones by accident. Um, what else? Um, the fire sequencer is basically giving a shunt and supervisory circuit. So the fact that this relay then turns it on, you get steady voltage out of this, and you're, you're getting the code to drive the oscillator, which moves this. And the output of this is then driving this relay, which is then doing the notification circuits, which is uh, that light, that light, and then that chime, which is off that relay. So you got a bunch of relays off of the notification side of it, but they were all just chained with my relay sync bus thingy 
which I've done videos about that before, but that makes it extra easy to loop together a bunch of relays of different, you know, voltages for running all sorts of different devices of different voltages together. So, yes. And now we've got 100 something volts going as well with it. 100 something volts DC all mixed in with all this. Um, I have considered some way to, you know, do more of the howl side of things off of its native voltage. Um, obviously, these relays were of some help, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure where else I could really go with it. This is honestly working pretty darn well. Um, so, yeah, supervisory and uh, auto oscillator start stop. Basically, been staring at the patents for the panel and the system for way too long, and um, realizing that they had a printer and all this other stuff. Absolutely crazy. Uh, entire thing is mind boggling still. Um, and I keep finding more. I did not think I'd be doing another video this soon, but here we are. Um, but on that note, let's not keep going. Uh, hopefully I have even more next time. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe getting to the end here. I'm almost wanting another one of these now. I, at first I was like, oh, I have too many, but I think, um, having a third one would kind of let me figure out if I have the loop stuff working correctly. Cause right now there's only two. It's hard to know if it's a full loop. Um, so yeah, if I could get a third one and actually have the XLR going, uh, I think that would be the epitome of this. Uh, so I am probably going to be on the lookout, but, um, other than that, not too much more for now. Um, until next time, Hal Transmitter again.